Hi, it's Stephen Molnar and joining me is Conrad Bobolak, who's the CEO and founder of Investors Prime. Um, Conrad, I want to ask you a question that uh, people often talk about is the disadvantages or the, or the threats, the risks with buying off the plan. You hear all these horror stories about people paying, um, particularly up on the Gold Coast, you may have heard um, about the Hilton Hotel and places like that where they pay you know, multi-million dollars and it comes back at, at half the value when it comes time to settlement. Um, so that's why a lot of people have concerns around off the plan. So can you give us your thoughts on that, please? Absolutely. And look, to a lesser extent, you know, Dockland South Bank has been a good example of people overpaying for apartments, holding onto them for five years and having no growth. The, look, the reality is people are going to lose money on everything they ever do, whether it's stock market, property market, whether it's collectibles, you know, people are always going to lose money. And with off the plan, every year there's a number of stories and examples, not even in the Gold Coast, in actual really good suburbs where mm. people have been caught up and overpaid, you know, and then the property comes in lowered valuation, they have to put money in and they get in trouble. Um, there's going to be stories like that all the time. Right. You know, it's just the reality of life. Nothing's going to change. The key is that the risk is always with the investor, not the investment. Mm -hmm. You know, so they need to identify the risks before it happens. And by identifying the risk is they've got to know what the, what the area is currently selling at mm -hmm. and whether they're overpaying per square meter for a particular property. Right. So knowing the area of speaking to local agents beyond the project market that's selling them the actual development, because most of these off the plan apartments and townhouses sold by project marketers, they've got to go to local agents and do a bit of leg, legwork and research mm -hmm. and actually inform themselves about what they're buying. Yeah. So if you're buying an apartment, for example, in St Kilda right now, you're paying 11,000 a square meter, you're overpaying by about 2,000, you know, 2,500 mm -hmm. a square meter. So you've got to know what what apartments are selling for in a particular area per square meter. You know, so, so that's never going to change. I think that the reality is whether it's off the plan or established, people are always going to overpay on, on, for properties. But I think what, the, what happens in the media is they like to flag the off the plan well, stories and highlight them. That and, sells and, newspapers. Yeah, because yeah. Oh, there's, another, there's a family here, they bought an apartment in off the plan and then suddenly two years later, you know, it's worth, you know, a lot less than they paid for. Now, Let's look at some of the reasons why things can be worth less than you paid for. Because I've seen a lot of instances where in areas like St Kilda, Hawthorne, Canterbury, South Yarra, where people have actually paid a really good price for an apartment at a particular point in time in mm -hmm. the marketplace. They paid a really good price. But when they came to settle, there were other projects in the area that were settling and they were getting fire sold and people were actually defaulting. Yep. Not because of the project, because their circumstances have changed. Like they couldn't get financed. They couldn't get financed. They were dumping properties on the market mm -hmm. and those properties were getting resold at a lower price point. Right. And that lower price point was creating a lower price point for the whole market. And dragging it down. And dragging it down. So sometimes, yep. for example, it's not even your project that you're buying into off the plan. Mm -hmm. It's other projects in the suburb that are settling at the same time and people are defaulting in those projects. And that reference point is created for your apartment and it comes in a lower price point. Mm -hmm. So, you know, number one is, I guess, if you're buying off the plan, you've always got to have a buffer where you can put in, you know, 20% into the property. So apart from the 10% 10 10 deposit that you're paying, even though if you're pre-approved for 90% lending, you should have another 10% up your sleeve somewhere in equity mm -hmm. as a plan B. Yeah. If the property comes in low or if the lender changes policy because a lot of lenders now are changing their policies and a lot of people got caught up where they were pre-approved for a particular amount of, of money, you know, like for example, 90% LVR. When it comes time to settle, that product that were approved for two years ago no longer exists. The circumstances have changed or the credit policy has changed. Mm. Now they can only borrow 80%. What do you do? That, that happened recently with a lot of the um, APRA changes from the regulator, correct? Absolutely. APRA changed the, you know, influenced... Um, I think it's about 16 lenders that mm -hmm. um, in Australia that um, because most of, them, most of them don't actually care what APRA does, but the 16 main ones that actually do matter um, were being pressured to reduce their investment book exposure, mm -hmm. and they were the way they did that wasn't to reduce interest rates so much was to increase their credit scoring and make it harder for investors to get a certain amount of money, yep. and also the LVRs went down considerably. So people had to put more money into the into the deal. If they um, had the money. If they have the money. If they haven't got the money, they, they the developer can actually keep the deposit and sue them for the balance. And then resell it. And resell it and, and that it drags down the price. Absolutely. Right. 
So that happens. Look, that's always going to happen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the reality of, of, of the market and it's never going to change. It's like, are people going to lose money in the stock market? Absolutely. Are they going to make money in the stock market? Absolutely. Yep. You know, what's new? Um, so I think it's about educating yourself, is having a plan B. And also, you know, a lot of investors, um, they, they actually look at that as opportunity. You know, um, mm -hmm. if you are in contact with local agents and you, you do see properties that have the fundamentals getting fire sold, it's a good time to pick up a bargain, mm. you know? I mean, one thing that amazes me about property investing is if you look at annual sales, we always wait to, to the end of the year to, to do our shopping. I, I buy, you know, I buy three suits every year on sale, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I buy appliances on sale, everything, you know? But why is it with property, people are scared to buy at the lowest point in the market? You know, I mean, historically, it's always bounced it back up. Mm. But people have this inclination thinking of that, that, you know, the sky's falling every time the market is a correction. But at the same time, if there's a development that's getting, that's, that's got, a, you know, good location, good price point, but it's getting, a few properties are getting liquidated, it's a really good time to jump in and pick up, yeah. pick up a really good property at a bargain price. So I think, I think number one is there's a risk to everything. Number two is the risk is usually the majority of the risk lies with the investor. And it's about doing research and having a plan B. Um, and and j just in terms of your research, that means making sure you're paying the right price in the market. Is absolutely. That what you okay. You've always got to make sure you understand exactly what the cost per square meter is of a townhouse or an apartment or a mm -hmm. house in a particular suburb at a particular point in time. Yep. That's when you know you're not overpaying or yep. overpaying. And look, the reality is a lot of owner occupiers are happy to overpay you know, for property. I've been to a lot of auctions mm. the last two years where I've seen houses sell for 10, 15% above vendors reserve. Mm. And to me, the market is always vendors reserve because yeah. vendors are always unrealistic. They always think that <laughs> their house is worth more than they should have. Mm. And I've seen property sell for 200,000 above vendors reserve, you know, because people are just emotionally attached to a property that they're sick of looking around. They really want that particular house, for whatever reason. Or, or it could be in the right school zone. Yeah, right school some, zone, some right people. park, right yep. frontage, right design. And they go, you know what, let's pay 200,000 more yep. because we're gonna be there for 15 years. Mm. So there's nothing wrong with that. You know, that, that's never get highlighted by the media. Yeah. Um, I mean, the media is always going to be highlighting negative stories. Yeah. You know, and every year there's going to be a mum on, you know, mum and dad on TV crying because they lost money through property or, or they bought the wrong time or they had the house repossessed. And ultimately, people are going to get in trouble when they invest. It's never going to change. The key is to educate yourself to make sure you get the right team and you know exactly what you're doing. And, right. and there's no substitute for that. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Awesome.